Ah, basketball, the sport of legends. Invented in the winter so snowmen would have something to do while waiting to melt. The game that was used as the premise for Space Jam. The game Shadow the Hedgehog played in that one McDonald's toy. Ultimately, the game that showed us the true art of throwing things into a basket. Did you know that I once had a really good basketball team of my own? Now I know what you're thinking. Me as a basketball coach? I must be talking nonsense. But I had quite the all-star team at my command. They looked a little something like this. Welcome to Nicktoons Basketball. Back when I was a kid, I had this big collection of SpongeBob SquarePants games for the computer. It contained three AWE classics, Operation Krabby Patty, Employee of the Month, and Battle for Bikini Bottom. But there was one extra game on it that wasn't quite like the others. For one, it wasn't made by AWE. It also wasn't just a SpongeBob game, but a whole Nicktoons game. I was a big fan of most Nickelodeon shows at the time, but I put off playing this one because it just didn't seem appealing to me. I've never really been into sports games, and I didn't think it would be unique enough to keep my interest. Regardless, I eventually gave it a shot, and for a time, I was hooked. This game was published by THQ, every Nickelodeon gamer's favorite publisher, and developed by two companies called Imagine Engine and Digital Eclipse. They were part of a merged company called Backbone Entertainment. Imagine Engine made a bunch of games for children's shows such as Arthur and Veggie Tales, and they eventually went on to develop the PC rendition of Fairly Odd Parents Shadow Showdown. Digital Eclipse was a company most known for emulating games such as Joust, Defender, and other arcade games. They're still around and highly active, keeping up a social media presence and even attending events to speak at them. Both companies are widely known for their involvement in the nostalgic memories held by many of us today. So let's see what they came up with here. When it starts, we get a cutscene that shows a few of the characters on the basketball field. Jimmy totally cheats by using a remote to steal the ball from Timmy, and SpongeBob scores a slam dunk. For some reason, this opening cutscene really stuck in the back of my mind for many years. When you get to the menu, you'll quickly learn just how involved this little sports game is. You have a good few different modes to choose from with many features you can adjust. It's hard to keep track of everything. You can even unlock images you can print out and... hang on your wall, I guess. I'm not really sure what you'd do with a cutout of Squidward. Maybe hang it next to your typing certificate from Spongebob Teaches Typing. So let's just choose a random mode and start the game. Gimme the Game gives you a randomized team and pits you up against another random team. The players include Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Sandy from Spongebob Squarepants, Timmy, Cosmo, Wanda, and AJ from Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy, Cindy, Sheen, and Goddard from Jimmy Neutron, Reggie from Rocket Power, Jenny from My Life as a Teenage Robot, Tommy from Rugrats and All Grown Up, and Danny Phantom from... Danny Phantom. Supposedly, all these characters have more or less the same play styles, but there are a few who seem to do a little better than others. For example, Wanda and Jenny are practically unstoppable. Jenny is basically my star player whenever I use her. When the game starts, you have to mash the mouse button faster than your opponent to gain first possession of the ball. Two announcers narrate every little thing you do, and their names are Sam Dunk and Chrissy Crossover. Clever, ain't it? Welcome to Nicktoons Basketball. Coming to you today live. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Dunn. And here to add a little color is Chrissy Crossover. Thanks. The weather outside is extremely wet and we're all looking forward to a sensational bit of basketball. They actually have quite a lot of lines for oddly specific circumstances. They seem to know every little detail about the game, such as when a team is making a comeback or how different play styles are affecting your performance. This obscure PC game has some impressive AI. Hits the rim! They'll lose their lead if they keep that up. The ball is stolen! Dumps it with authority! Takes it from inside the boards! Snags the rebound! You go! Not to mention the other players are actually kind of tough. Let's get into what a basic game looks like. You know how most games I play on this channel are button mashing simulators? Well this one's a mouse mashing simulator. You can use the keyboard, but the mouse is more efficient. At the same time, the game is so chaotic that it's hard to click where you want the cursor to go. You have to make it through the court without the enemy team stealing your ball while clicking on others to pass the ball to them or clicking on the basket to make a shot. It's a gamble whether or not your shot will land unless you use a card to increase your chances. The whole time, the characters are making comments about what's going on. Over here! Over here! I got it! 
don't you, Sam? <laughs> Sam. It's a miss. Lobs it from way no back. Oh, well, no harm done. They're still ahead. Love that. You can set the time each quarter takes, so if you want shorter games, you have the option to set each timer for only a minute. If this is your first time playing, your first match will likely be a train wreck. It's hard to tell the mouse what you want to do because everything is moving so fast and it's hard to click on the right thing. The game kind of relies on the chaotic nature of itself and uses it to really nail the feel of a fast-paced basketball game. Yeah, it can get frustrating, but it's all in the name of the game. After your first match, you'll be introduced to the concept of cards. You can unlock different abilities during your matches. Some give you better speed, strength, or accuracy, but the most notable ones are the special abilities that can almost guarantee a shot from whichever player uses it. Whoa! That was an incredible bounce! That was so cool! I was gonna take it anyway. That is some sick air, dude, and you gotta give props for being able to put on safety equipment in the middle of a b-ball game. Jenny uses the jets in her hair to get extra height for some authoritarian dunkage. Your other two options for game modes are exhibition and season. Going to one of these will bring you to a team select screen. You can either customize your team to suit your interests or cards, or you can use one of the teams set up by default. Many of them are broken down by shows, but others are a little more random. Check out some of these team names. Flying Pigs, Goobers, Deflators, and, um, that. I love this one group called the Nicktoons All-Stars. Tell me, when you think of Nicktoons, are these the four all-star characters that come to mind? Maybe they're the best players, I don't know. Now that brings me to another subject, the character choices. Maybe a lot of them came down to which voice actors they could get, but some of them are a little interesting. Reggie is the only Rocket Power character, and she wasn't even the main character from that show. I don't mind it, it's just an interesting choice. But why is Goddard there instead of Carl? I get that he's a fun character to play as, but it's still a strange decision. But for the most part, the cast is good. I also like that when you create a custom team, they even let you choose the color of your uniform. Now that's attention to detail. Good on you, Nick Games. Now nothing can stop the Lucy Gooseys. You can also choose arenas based on different locations from the shows. There are ones you can unlock too, like the Burial Ground from a series we'll talk about in just a moment. Now in the game itself, it's hard to use the cards because there is so much going on in the court that it hurts to move the mouse away for only a second so you can click a card. They aren't always guaranteed to work either. I also don't really like where they are on the screen because it's easy to click one on accident when you're trying to click the button to shoot a basket. You can only use each card once every two quarters. Every game is four quarters long, so you have to use them wisely. Another aspect that can get a little frustrating is this segment where you have to pass the ball to a teammate after someone scores a shot. Every single instance where I've been the one passing, the enemy has been able to intercept my ball. But whenever they're the ones passing, I can't figure out how to intercept it for the life of me. Darn NPCs and their unfair programming advantages. I also have to admit that I love the commentary. It had so much life to the game and the announcers can be funny sometimes. The voices are a nice touch too, even if some of them can grate on your ears over time. They really went above and beyond to keep this game from feeling dead. I gotta hand it to them. If you're just playing for fun and you enjoy Nicktoons, this is a nice little game. Nothing to get angry at, just a fine little series of basketball tournaments. But... There is actually somewhat of a story mode to this. And it has stakes. If you go into season mode, you select one team to represent you, then you play through a series of matches to win the trophy at the very end. Not only that, you also get to unlock the character Tack. Now let me tell you something, Tack had quite the series when I was growing up. There were three big Tack games, and you better believe I played every one of them. I was so invested in the Tack games that I kid you not, I played one through a tornado and didn't even realize a tornado was going on until I heard about it later. The promise of unlocking Tack was motivation enough for me, I had to win this tournament. So I got my team together, the Lucy Gooseys, and we were ready to take this game by storm. We went up against the Bikini Bottom Bouncers and dominated the game. We were just about to win and... I think this team has a pretty good X's and O's coach. That's right, the glitches caught up to us. 
Now it only got this bad once, but there were two other instances where the timer would freeze and the game wouldn't allow me to click on anything. The other players wouldn't even come after me. Now I don't want to say this is a problem with the game itself since it might just be an issue with a game this ancient running on a modern computer, but I was beginning to think I would have to say goodbye to my old friend Tack. These glitches were just too overbearing to deal with. Was this the end for the Lucy Gooseys? No, actually. After that really bad one, we didn't have any other problems. Our strategy was to keep Jenny at the forefront, win the mouse click matchup so she could get the ball, then we'd use her special card to score the first three points. It would only be uphill from there. I played to the point where my fingers were in literal agony from clicking so much. It hurt to go on, but I persisted. I needed that trophy. Also tack. So eventually, persevering despite my injury, I made it to the end and won the final match. It was a hard ten rounds, but with all my strength and determination- Wait, 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 what, wait, what do you mean there's one more to go? Come on, Imagine Engine, did you really have to pull a prank like that? That's so cruel. But once you win, you get the trophy and tack. Is it worth it in the end? Well, he can turn into a frog. That's pretty cool, I guess. So now that that's out of the way, let's address some of the other details. You can turn on options for the announcers to call foul or out-of-bounds shots, but I don't entirely recommend it. It just causes the game to stop at random intervals, which can make it drag on for longer than it should. Still, it's nice that you're given the option in case you want to challenge yourself. In my opinion, the game is challenging enough as is. Especially if you're up against a team with one of the same players you have. It can get really confusing. Because there's so much chaos going on in the court, it's hard to tell what's happening sometimes and it's easy to lose sight of the ball. Sometimes I'll have it without even realizing it. When someone else has it, I just mash the mouse until I steal it or block their shot. By the way, listen to the sound effect whenever you steal the ball. The ball is stolen! Abs the ball away, shoot from center! Oh. That's one heck of a sound to make when someone steals a ball from you. Or maybe the one stealing the ball is making the sound, I don't know. Now looking back on this game, I have to admit my child self was a little hard on it. This used to be one of my least favorite Nickelodeon games, if not my least favorite overall. That didn't stop me from playing it a ton, but I found it frustrating and really hard to get a grasp on. As an adult, it isn't that bad, but it takes some getting used to. Maybe this game could have used a practice mode so you could get a better handle on the controls and cards without too much extra stress. I also would have liked the ability to customize your enemy team outside of multiplayer mode. The games are chaotic, but it's kind of like competing in an actual basketball game and feeling the intensity of everything around you. Or maybe it better emulates the feeling of watching a basketball game and fearing for your favorite team. Maybe this game made a sports fan out of me after all. The dialogue is also great and many lines of it have stuck in my head after all these years. I'll never forget some of the lines Sam and Chrissy throw at you, nor will I forget the constant sounds of Nickelodeon characters screaming at me to throw them the ball. Give me the ball! Look over here! Dude, over here! Mostly, it's a decent crossover with a shocking amount of effort behind it. If you like Nickelodeon and you like basketball, this might be the game for you. Hard as it can be, it surprisingly holds up. Not a bad addition to the Nickelodeon library. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.